I'm proposing to take questions one and two together. They relate to the same uh, subject. They are to, they're from Gareth Epps and from Zoe O'Connell, and they are to both House of Commons and the House of Laws on accreditation. So um, perhaps, uh, yes, Alistair, if you would like to um, answer these questions. Okay, the, the, the question essentially is uh, what have we done uh, in Parliament to um, implement the resolution of Federal Conference last year on police accreditation. Um, in, in the House of Commons, we have pursued this at two levels. Uh, we have pursued it uh, through Parliament and the uh, Parliamentary Party Committee on Home Affairs and Justice, uh, led by Tom Brake. He has been uh, working both uh, in his own contacts with the Home Office uh, and also through Parliament in raising the profile of this, you uh, tabling parliamentary questions. Um, within the department itself, Lynn Featherston, as the resident Home Office Minister, as she was at the time, has been pursuing this. There is an ongoing ministerial review of that, uh, and it, it's certainly something, uh, Gareth, that I would expect uh, Jeremy Brown to remain completely engaged in. And I'm fairly certain that if he thinks that both you and I, Gareth, are watching his progress, then that engagement will be guaranteed. Uh, Tom or Dick? Or Harry. Uh, Tom, Dick or Harry? We don't, we don't have a Harry, I'm afraid. No. Um, I, th I think, um, as Alistair said, um, the action has flowed from the um, policy committee, which Sally Hamley uh, has been joint chair. And I think this, it makes a more general point that's worth um, making about the way we're operating in Parliament now, which is that the, the policy committees, which are equally made up of members of the House of Lords and Commons with a, with a co-chair, uh, meet regularly uh, and meet effectively and decide on issues such as this, where is the best place to uh, exert the pressure. Uh, and in this case, uh, as Alistair said, it was agreed before I was whipped, but this was um, uh, being looked at earlier, uh, that the best way of doing it, because it's a slightly higher profile than the Lords, was to do it by questions in the Commons. Thank you. Um, before we get the uh, supplementary, uh, does Zoe want to ask a supplementary as well? Is she, is she here? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, Gareth, would you ask, ask your supplementary, and then I'll take Zoe's supplementary straight after yours, if you like. Well, I'd like to thank, thank Alistair and Dick for the, the, the best answer to this, to this question, which I've asked various party bodies dur during the week. I think it is a good example of the way the Parliamentary Party Committee is wor are working in, in particular to, to deliver on-conference resolutions. The supplementary, I think, is really is when, once the outcome of the Minister Ministerial review is known. Can that can that be uh, made known more widely throughout the, through the party? Okay. And Zoe, would you like to ask ask a supplementary? Um, yes, I would um, like to highlight the fact that Andrew Wiseman, uh, chair of the Federal Conference Committee, um, indicated in his report that that committee was struggling um, against established Home Office practice and advice, um, which means FCC is not in the best position to deliver the wishes of conference. Um, this unfortunately means the burden of filling conferences wishes falls upon the parliamentary party. Um, could the parliamentary party commit to reporting back in its next report to conference, please? Okay, so report back um, and uh, working with the Home Office Committee. So that if somebody reminds me, I will include that in my next parliamentary <laughs> report. And if it's not, then you might just have to ask me the question to prompt me on it. My memory is not always the greatest on, on these things, but yes, I think, the, and this is effectively the answer to, to Gareth's supplementary as well, it does seem like the sensible thing to do, that where you have action within government, which essentially has its genesis within the, um, the, 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 a conference resolution, then I think it makes uh, eminent good sense to report back to conference on that. And, you know, since Zoe mentions Andrew Wiseman, I, I mean, I have to say I have enormous sympathy for Andrew, for um, Duncan Greenland and others who have had to take on some very, very difficult management on, on this issue. You know, the work of FCC is probably some of the most unglamorous and unattractive, dare I say it, tedious, but, you know, they go about their, their tasks with incredibly good humour and uh, effectiveness, in my view, and I think we should all be grateful to them for the work they do. Anything else, sir? Okay, thank, that, that concludes those first two questions. Uh, Zoe, you might want to wait around. You've, you've um, asked 
A third question on the order paper, which is in relation to the equalities portfolio and sharing responsibility with um, Conservative colleagues post reshuffle. I guess that's one for you, Arthur. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Zoe's question essentially seeks an assurance that we are championing diversity and equality within Whitehall. And I mean, yes, I think is the the, the short and uh, straightforward answer to that. She then goes on to say uh, she's seeking assurance that Joe Swinson will have the necessary weight within government to carry on Lynn Featherstone's excellent work. It's a braver man than me to uh, pass comment on, on Joe Swinson's weight. Um, but I can tell you that equality issues uh, have been at the heart of Joe's work since she came into Parliament, and I knew her as a parliamentary candidate long before that. And I cannot think of anybody in this party, and I mean this is absolutely no disrespect to Lynn, who did a tremendous job in the Equalities Brief, who is better able and uh, better qualified and more enthusiastic in the way in which she pursues uh, equality issues than Joe Swinson. Um, I, I, put aside my own modesty for a second because I did have a role in the, the, the reshuffle uh, decisions, uh, although ultimately of course they're all next, but I thought she was an inspired appointment who will do this party proud. Thank you. <coughs> now this wasn't a question specifically at the Lords, but do, do well, you have to, to Just to, to um, make the point that in addition uh, to Joe's role, Lindsay Northover in the Lords is a, um, a government whip. Uh, with an equalities brief as well, which, which has the great advantage that she can go into uh, DCMS uh, with a, a certain amount of, of, of weight uh, as well to uh, back up what Joe's doing. So uh, Lindsay was doing that before, so there is, is some continuity um, on that front, and uh, I know that she's very uh, seized of it and, and uh, um, takes the issue extremely seriously. I'm sorry, do you have a supplementary? Um, thank you very much. It's good to hear that um, equality is in good hands. Um, as I understand it, although I've seen no official confirmation, Joe's brief is to concentrate mostly on um, the women's uh, portfolio. Um, can we ensure that wider equality issues, um, Lynn has pushed, such as the transaction plan and equal marriage, um, retain an essential Liberal Democrat touch? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I think that's pretty clear. Um, can we...